Welcome to These Nuts Garage, and today we're going to be talking about the five things that you need to know when you're buying a used Ford Fusion. All right, so like I said in the intro, what we're gonna be doing is talking about five things that you're gonna to need to know about buying a used Ford Fusion. Now this is a 2014 Ford Fusion Titanium and that was like the higher end of those packages uh, that you could get on the Ford Fusion in that year. Now, a little backstory on this car. We bought this car used when it had 9,000 miles on it. And we got the, uh, it was a certified used vehicle, which meaning it came with a uh, 48 months uh, 48,000 mile warranty on it now I'm gonna run you through some of the issues that we've had with the car they're not in any particular order of uh, ranking or anything like that but these are some things you will need to know if you're looking at buying one of these cars all right so probably one of the first issues we ran into with this Ford Fusion was the backup camera now what had happened there was my wife got in the car one morning, she put the car in reverse, and she seen that the image on the screen had flipped. So if the garbage can was on her driver's side, it was showing it on the passenger side. And as she was backing out of the garage, she was like, well, that looks funny. So she told me about it, and I was like, well, that could be dangerous because maybe there's something on this side that you don't want to hit, but you think it's on this side, and you back right into it because you're trying to avoid it over here, and it's over here, and you hit it. So... What I did was we took it to Ford, to a local Ford dealership, and they gave us a quote of about $600 to replace and fix this camera. Now, I was thinking, that's a small camera. That's a whole lot of money. I'm not spending that if I don't have to. Now, the dealership did tell us, they said, well, you'll have to have the computer, the camera reprogrammed to the computer. Now, I don't know if that's a, a, the case, but in my case, I didn't have to do that. So what I did was I got on uh, eBay, started looking for parts. I found a brand new Ford camera, it's still in the box. And the camera itself was $600. And I'm like, well, that's crazy. I mean, it's a little camera, it shouldn't be that much. So found some used cameras that were off of some wrecked Ford Fusions. And that was the route I took. And that was about an $80 repair. Now I'll put the link up here. If you wanna go watch that video, you can click that and see what that it entails to replace this camera yourself now uh, it is about a two or three hour job i would say but if you're mechanically inclined and you take your time it's something that you should be able to do it's not that difficult now once i got the the camera in the car jumped back in the vehicle everything worked fine and it has has since the day i put the camera in now the next thing you're going to need to know is about your oil changes and your transmission fluid changes. Now, when we bought this car, like I said, it had 9,000 miles and this car was serviced from the dealership. Every 5,000 miles, the oil was changed at the dealership up until we got to 100,000 miles. Now at 100,000 miles, I'll put a card up here. I do a review of kind of the car and where we started changing some fluids in the vehicle. Now at 100,000 miles, what I did was, is I changed this vehicle over to an Amsoil, uh, I, I can't remember the weight of the oil, um, whatever it calls for, that's what I went with, but it was a fully, a full, 100% synth synthetic motor oil. Now that, I change it every 15,000 miles, but it can go up to 25,000 miles, but I have trust issues and I'm already kind of leery about going 15,000 miles. And I will soon have the results back from the second oil change um, for this vehicle when we converted it over to the Amsoil products. I have an oil test from previous oil to this oil, and we're going to see how better the Amsoil product is over the conventional oil that comes from the Ford dealership. Now, with that being said, like I said, this vehicle has been serviced at the dealership all the way up to 100,000 miles. Now, one thing the dealer never told us, that the fluid in this transmission needs to be changed every 30,000 miles. I think that Ford recommends it up to 100,000, but if I'm not mistaken, if you go watch uh, Ford Tech Make Me Loco, I think that's his channel, he tells you that the fluids in these transmissions need to be changed sooner 
than what Ford recommends. And uh, he's a master mechanic on this, and I take his word. So at 100,000 miles, not only did I change the motor oil, but I also changed the transmission fluid. There's a link up here for both videos. I'll put the transmission one up here now. Now, changing the fluid in the transmission was not that hard. I think when I drained the fluid out of the transmission, I m took a, a measurement. I think it was a gallon of fluid that come out of the transmission, and I replaced it with another gallon of uh, transmission fluid. So that is it's not very hard there is no filter to change in the transmission it's just a fluid and it basically has a drain plug and then there's a fill plug underneath the hood now you want to make sure you change your oil if, if you're having it done at the dealership you want to have a don't use the cheapest oil you can find to put in these vehicles put what the manufacturer recommends or something better and change them i think ford it was every five thousand miles with their oil don't put the cheapest oil filter on these cars you know if you're going to put an oil filter on it put a good one because these engines go bad you just lost pretty much the whole car because i could imagine having this engine replaced is probably five or six thousand uh, dollars i'm just guessing off the top of my head but it's not going to be cheap where if you'd have just spent the extra money at the beginning and brought the proper stuff and the we'll call it the good stuff whether it's Ford Motorcraft oil that's designed for this car or something better like Amsoil and those types of products. Now, now while we got the hood open, let's talk about the purge valve. Now, after 100,000 miles, my wife was driving down the road. She went to pass somebody. She kind of just gassed on it. When she did, the car took off, and then it threw a check engine light. Now, don't know if there was something in the system that when she punched it, it threw some debris or let's say carbon buildup or something, but it's plugged up or messed up the purge valve. Now I'll put a link up here for this uh, purge valve replacement. This is something that you can do yourself. And then since I've made this video, I've gotten a few tips from some other people of things that you can do to kind of shorten uh, the repair on this part because it can be very tedious. Um, if you don't have patience and if you don't have all day to fool with it, then I'm going to recommend you take it to somebody who can do it. Overall, it's a simple job. It's just that the purge valve is down. It's up here on the top of the motor, the actual valve is, but it has a bunch of lines that run all the way to the bottom of the engine. And it's kind of like a spider. Like I said, I'll put that uh, card up here and you can go click on that video and watch how it's done. After that video was done, my hands were cut up for me shoving my hands down into this uh, engine bay to try to fix it. Now, maybe if I'd have went from the underside and done it, but at that point, the car was on the ground and I didn't have a lift. I was actually doing it in a parking lot of a place we were staying at in Kentucky. So I wasn't able to get underneath the car to remove the lower we'll call it splash pan uh maybe if i had a lift and i could have done it i could have reached those a little better but i think the code on that was a pc 144 or something like that zero 144 um i'll put it right here that, that that code underneath this hood so that was a job the part i think was under a hundred dollars fixed it took the car up to a local um auto parts store it was and they cleared the codes out and i've had no issues with that whatsoever so anymore knock on this tree over here or something but uh purge valve was another problem and since i got the hood up i also did a video right here of replacing the battery now the battery I went to go to like AutoZone or O'Reilly's or somewhere like that. They said they will, you know, we'll just replace the battery for you. And I think I sent my wife up there because uh, the battery was kind of dragging. And when when she went up there, they said she, they could not replace the battery on this car. And I'm like, well, that's I've never heard of that. So went home, bought a battery, swapped it out. Like I said, the video car to be up here. Uh, made the video is just. Cause I thought everybody in the world knew how to change a battery and apparently it's had more views than any other video I've ever made. Uh, I've had a lot of comments on it about how when you replace the battery in the car, you're supposed to have the computer to recognize the new battery so it doesn't charge like the old battery. 
Well, all I know is if you go to a Ford dealership, they're probably going to charge you a lot of money to change this battery. Where if you can change the battery from the auto parts store and then go to the Ford dealership and have them do whatever they need to do with a computer, uh, it's probably going to cost you less money, even in the long run. Now, I never did that. I've never had another problem out of this car with this battery. Starts up, runs perfect. Uh, maybe I got lucky. Maybe I didn't. But um, just know you can actually change the battery out. And then if you need to, you could go uh, to the dealership or to some a mechanic maybe who has that tool that can reset the battery the way the alternator charges the battery. So with that being said, we're going to move around here to the other part of the car and discuss some a few other things that we've had issues with. All right, so the next thing that I had to do is the rear shocks. Uh, start, uh, probably all of this occurred around after the vehicle had, you know, right around 100,000 miles. So up to 100,000 miles, we didn't really have a whole lot of issues with the car except for that backup camera. Now, I did have to replace the rear shocks um, on this vehicle. I did not get a video made of that because as I was trying to make a video, I was in the parking lot, I think of a, Auto Zone in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, and in the parking lot with the car jacked up because once again, we was in a different location. And uh, my battery ran low on my camera and I lost it. So I was like, well, I just lost it. So anyway, there is not a video on changing the shocks on the rear of this vehicle. But I did have to do that. And that was a pretty simple job. Um, I think there's two bolts and then on top of the rear shock there's another bolt or two uh probably took um probably an hour and a half because i was trying to make a video if i was doing this um in my garage just trying to hurry up and get it done it'd probably take about an hour 30 minutes for each side now something that we do have to do are the front struts and that video will be coming out soon i haven't done it yet but i will be doing that within the next month or so but they sell a set of shocks or struts for the front of your vehicle it's a strut and what it is is it's basically a shock and a coil spring put together and i'm going to do what they call quick uh struts and basically what when you buy the strut it's the strut and the coil spring together you undo three bolts at the top two bolts at the bottom the old one slides out new one slides in so i'll be doing that in the future and the reason why i'm not going to be reusing the coils springs that are on the car is because i don't have the correct equipment to disassemble the strut from that spring and i don't want to take the time to fool with it to me it's just as easy just to buy the quick set and then just swap it out and be done with it because time is money and when you're maybe in a parking lot of an o'reilly's or AutoZone or uh, napa or something like that I don't have time to be fooling with all that so i'm gonna have to get it done because probably when i do it we'll be in another location so um front struts video coming out in the future all right so number five is going to be tires yep tires so in 2014 when ford made the titaniums they came with stock 19 inch tires now i think the other se's or what are the packages below maybe those had like 17s or 18s on them but 19 inch tires are less common than 17s 18s and even 20s uh, it's kind of a i'm not going to say a rare tire but it's not a, as used as much so manufacturers don't make as many of them so that makes what they do make the prices go up so car came originally with uh, continental contact tires when i went to go get a new set of those tires they were like over a thousand dollars to be the tires and mounted and balanced uh, so i think the first set of tires i bought some of those replaced them with that and then the next time i went to buy tires i was like they didn't last as long as i wanted them to it just didn't seem like i was getting my money's worth so what i did was i bought a cheaper tire I uh, bought it at walmart.com and I'm not plugging Walmart, but that's where I bought the tires and um, they cost me a little over $100 a tire. I think by the time I had the tires mounted and balanced and all of that, um, it was under $600. I want to say it was just under, right around 500 bucks. Those tires lasted two years. Now, um, they were a very good riding tire. They actually drove rode better than the Continental tires, and they seem to last about as long. So 
once um, those tires wore out, I bought these. Uh, these are, I think, uh, I'll put a picture of the tire right here because I don't remember exactly the brand of it. But I also got them through Walmart and um, put them on there. And they, these tires right here probably have about 5,000 miles on them since I, since I bought them. And when I bought the tires was during the COVID stuff. So I bought them online. They shipped them to the house. Well, I couldn't go to the to a store to have them put on, so I had to go to a um, different um, tire shop. And when I went there, I was like, well, put these tires on the car and have it aligned. Now, as this car sets today, it has about 127,000 miles on it. At 100 and say 22,000, I took the car in with the new tires to have it aligned. And the um, gentleman at the counter said, we checked your car, it is in perfect alignment. So you don't need to have your uh, car aligned. So 122,000 miles, car's never been aligned. And at that amount of mileage, it's still perfect. And I have to give credit to Ford on that one because my wife did hit uh, a pothole that bent two rims on this car. It bent two rims, but it didn't mess up the alignment. So, kudos to Ford on that one. Now, with that being said, yes, two of these rims on this car were bent. I was able to take it to a, a gentleman who could fix the rims, put them back in um, round, I will say. But one thing about that is when they put that on the machine, it did mess up some of the paint that's on the rims. So, in the future, you may see this car with a new set of rims. Um, because if I'm going to spend the money on having these painted, I can just put that money towards a new set of rims and then I'll have two sets of rims and I can get these fixed later. So tires are the number five. So what I'll do now is I'll give you a quick walk around of the car, maybe show you the inside of the car. Uh, let's just talk about wear and tear, uh, real quick. All right. So I'm sitting here editing this video and then I remembered something probably the most important thing about this 2014 Ford Vision and that's going to be number six and that's going to be your front headlights the bulbs the low beam bulbs the high beams uh, turn signals and parking lights I did a video here's the card where I re replaced all of these bulbs in this vehicle now what it what I had to do was since I wanted to change my high beams my low beams turn and marker lights all at once, I had to remove the headlight housing from each side of the car. And in order to do that, you have to remove the front bumper. Now, talk to some people who work at a Ford dealership that said when people bring their cars in to get these headlights bulbs replaced, they send the vehicle to the auto body shop because you have to remove that front bumper. Now, I had a lot of comments about how Oh, I can change my bulbs out and not remove the headlights. Well, maybe you got little bitty hands, but I couldn't get my hands in there to do the high beams. Since then, since I had those comments, I did replace the low beams without removing the headlights, housing, and the front bumper. I got lucky, I would say, because it's just so tight. I could barely get my hands in there, and I did replace those low beams. High beams, there's no way I can do it. If you can do it, why don't you post the video in the comments down here because I would like to see how you get your little hands in there to get those uh, bright high beams bulbs out and get that retaining spring back in there and then the dust cap on it. If you can do that, I want to see that video. But I couldn't because my hands, I guess, are too big. So uh, that's going to be number six. Uh, if you want to see how that's done, just uh, click on that uh, card up above here. All right, real quick on the wear and tear of this vehicle. Uh, when I walk around the car, there are no paint issues on this car. This was a tri-coat paint, uh, three-stage paint. Uh, this is why my wife liked this car so much was because the paint almost looks like pearl or something like that. It's just got this tri-coat look to it and it's really a, a pretty paint job on it. We have no paint issues. We have had no uh, other body issues as far as uh, anything cracking or breaking or anything like that now when it comes to the inside of the car um, 
you know, we are usually pretty gentle on our vehicles. We don't destroy them. We don't, right now the car's dirty as you can see because it's probably been sitting for two weeks uh, in our driveway and uh, hasn't even really moved. Um, we try to keep the inside of the car clean as much as we can right now. It's a little dirty, but I'll be taking it out today and getting it cleaned uh, just because it's such a pretty day outside. Uh, seats are in good shape. Um, radio, all that stuff still works fine. No buttons are broken, nothing like that. So we take pretty good care of our vehicles. Now, if you're hard on stuff and you don't take care of it, don't be surprised when your car looks like junk in two or three years because you don't take care of it uh that's going to be on you not on the manufacturer so uh let's take a look So this one I'm just going to run through real quick and as you can see the door panels are in good shape uh, seats or leather are still in good shape now this car did have heated seats but not cooled consoles in good shape and basically the car looks the same way all the way through uh, one thing about you'll see back here in the floor is this is a rubber floor mat it runs all the way across uh, back seat is in good shape, but back to these floor mats These are weather tech paid a ton of money for these back here and for the ones up front And as you can see the ones up front Are stock the factory ones When we bought this car before I ever picked up the car I had a set ordered and had a set of these weather tech floor mats and this ain't a ran on weather tech but do not Waste your money on WeatherTech floor mats. Don't do it. And the reason why is because of this. They roll up on the edges all the way through there. Uh, you know, it was so bad up front that my wife was, it kept getting in her way. And she said, just take those out. Since nobody sits in the back, uh, we just left them. But I would have probably bought a Husky brand or something else. But... For what you pay for these and for them to roll up, you should be able to send them back and get a new pair because that's that's made poorly. So enough of that. So still the back seat looks good. Door panels look good. Even the passenger side one looks good. The passenger seat looks good. Now, coming in the car, kind of hit the button to make everything light up. just to verify the odometer. You can see it does have 127 on it. Uh, here's the radio. It's connecting to something, but it's a good sounding radio. It does have a subwoofer in the back. It's got a speaker up here, tweeter there, door speaker here. I think it's got door speakers in the back doors and speakers in the rear deck. I think this is supposed to have 10 uh, speakers in this vehicle. Um, now that's gonna be about all of the inside. Um, like I said, we take good care of it or try to. Uh, it is extremely dirty right now. We will be getting it cleaned up uh, later today. Alrighty, so I know what you're thinking. These nuts, garage, do you recommend buying a Ford Fusion? Well, heck yeah, I do. Love this car. Uh, when we bought this car, we searched for this particular car with this, these particular features, the rims, the paint, everything, and we found it, and we got a good deal on it. 
had an extra warranty on it because it was a certified Ford vehicle and loved it ever since. Uh, to this day, this car still performs like it did the day we got it. It has that 2.0 liter in it at EcoBoost and it will flat haul. I mean, it'll get up for what it is. Um, it rides good, it's comfortable. It, it's just a fun car to drive. Now, if you're buying this one and you got this particular type of car and you got under 100,000 miles or you found one, uh, I would recommend buying it as long as you do your research on having the car inspected, getting the car facts, get, making sure you get all the maintenance records and see how they took care of this vehicle. If they took care of the vehicle real well by getting the oils changed when they were supposed to, getting the spark plugs, and that was another thing that I forgot to mention, I'll put it up here, is I did replace the spark plugs in this vehicle, and that probably takes 30 minutes. So your basic maintenance is pretty quick on doing all of that. Now, if you're buying a, tight, a Ford Fusion that's an SE or a newer model, and it has a different engine. I can't speak on those engines, only the 2.0, because that's the only engine that we've driven in these Ford Fusions. But when it comes to the outside of the vehicle, your basic suspension components, uh, things like that, it's gonna be pretty similar to this one. Um, so we've had no issues with the body suspension other than having to replace maintenance on routine maintenance items like shocks, brakes, things like that. So it's been a great car, and if you're buying one, uh, and you do buy one, I hope you enjoy it. And if you have bought one, or if you've had any problems out of your Ford Fusion, put it in the comments down below, because I'm just kind of curious. We haven't had that much. Um, also, if you bought one and you loved it, put that down below. What do you like about your Ford Fusion, um, you know, and what do you dislike about it? The biggest dislike about this car is the tires. But I've kind of remedied that and it's not that big of a deal anymore. So that's gonna be the end of this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful if you are trying to buy a Ford Fusion or you have bought one uh, in the future. Uh, so if it was a big help, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, because most people who watch these videos haven't subscribed to the channel, go down there, right there. And it says subscribe just hit that button subscribe to the channel because we're going to have some more stuff on this car in the future because guess what i didn't mention i gotta have the windows retinted not a problem of the manufacturer just a problem of the people who make the window tent that's got to be done some struts have got to be put on the front and who knows what we may do with this car we may have a new vehicle maybe coming in the summer maybe don't know not making any promises to the channel and it would be a brand new vehicle, so it would be kind of replacing this one as the daily, but keep your you know eyes and ears open for that. Maybe we'll get that done. Um, so haven't subscribed to the channel? Go over there and subscribe. Comment down below. If you got a question about the car, if you got a comment about the car, if you got a car like this, if you wish you had a car like this, if you hate these cars or if you love the cars, comment down below if you're taking the time to watch the video do me a favor comment down below subscribe to the channel and like it because the more people we get to watch this channel the bigger and better things that we're able to do uh, now that we are monetized we are getting paid for these videos and the more you video it subscribe comment like all that helps us make more money to be able to put in these projects also Share it. If you know somebody who's got a Ford Fusion, just send them this link and say, what do you think about this video? Maybe they'll watch it. Maybe they'll comment. Maybe they won't. But share the video on social media platforms, things like that, because that also helps us grow. And maybe there's somebody who's looking at one of these cars, and it'll help them make an informed decision. Now, that's going to be all for this video. I got to get out here and uh, go wash this car up and get it cleaned up just so it can sit some more in the driveway. So... Y'all have a great day and have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next video.